to the uh, princesses to, to tell the computer which one you should do it first and then do others. So, so this is a, uh, uh, well, in a way we already entered the, uh, the variable and the assignment section. So, so everything, uh, everything uh, in Python is an object, but object can be assigned to an, a variable. But that the variable is basically a name, or if you think about it, it's basically a pointer points to the object. So, you, so each object in, uh, can be actually linked to multiple names. And this apparently in Python is also called binding a variable to an uh, object. So if I go back to, let me, uh, yeah. okay, I have this example here. So, so pi, if we say pi is a three and in a very rough way, I guess. Yeah. And then we can calculate the area. Is that, is that the same thing with the book? 11, yes, I, that's actually exactly the same example the book shows. So then I pick a radius of 11. I calculate the area, which is the radius to the tooth power, the square, times pi. And then I, I have the area. But if, after I do this, uh, have, after I have done this, I reassign the radius as 14. And, but the area should still be there, but the radius will change. Uh, if I run this, let me say, well, maybe I should also print. Uh, the area again, it shouldn't change. So, yeah, so, uh, but if I, after run the radius, if I change that to, if I change the pi equal 3.141595925, actually, 126.52. That's as far as I can remember the pi. So, and then you get a more accurate number. So, uh, okay. So it's basically a uh, variable can be bind to a different object. Uh, Is there a command like a, like this command in Java explicitly states a certain iteration? That's a good question. Uh, I have never done that myself, so uh, I have to come back to that question. But yeah. So uh, this is the first time I teach J uh, Python. Uh, so some of the, although I use it, but I don't use it in all the full range, <laughs> quite limited. So I, I, I'm not sure about that one. I need to probably just Google to find out why not. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, the, there is a difference between trying to teach something and just use it. I don't have to cover all things my, just for myself. But if I want to teach it, apparently I'm expected to know everything about it. <laughs> so, uh, but I do not. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> okay, so the Python is case sensitive. Uh, so, but you uh, digits, you can, but the name cannot start with the digits. Uh, all special character like the underscore sign. Uh, uh, in a way, uh, capital Julia, capital J Julia, and the lowercase Julia will be different names. Uh, Java is also case sensitive. Uh, which language is case not sensitive? Uh, Actually, I'm not sure <laughs> which language is. Okay, so, so probably, I yeah, I'm 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 not sure which language is case, uh, but as most of languages seem to be case sensitive. Uh, there are some keywords. Uh, so in 2.7, there will be as a third break class continue, define, delete those things. But 3.6 has its own uh, slightly different uh, keywords. Uh, so. 
the pound sign is a common line in Python. Uh, but a pound sign is also a syntax symbol in uh, IPython and Markdown files. So it, in fact, if you go back to the go back to the IPython part, if I add a, a C, if I add a, a let me see, if I add something, insert. If I change, see that's code. If I change that to Markdown. So that would be, I say, this is a header. If I run that, then it becomes this is a header. So actually that's, oh no, actually that should be double pound sign, uh, probably. That should be double pound sign, this is header. Still not correct. Uh, maybe I should put a space there. Okay, now this is, yeah, this time, right, so. Okay, so basically, uh, if you use IPython, you, have, you can actually mix markdown heading code uh, in the same file, but you have to tell IPython uh, which block is for what. That says uh, there will be different syntax between Python and markdown, so it sometimes it's a bit confusing, but uh, if you know how to use it, it can be, a uh, you can generate a report quite nicely. Okay, so <clears throat> Python, this is actually quite interesting. Uh, Python allow multiple assignments, so X and Y equal two and three. So this is seem to be uh, just convenient, but if you, if you think about the, in Java, how do you switch to variable? You have to use the third variable to do that. <laughs> but in Python, you don't have to do You can just say X, Y equal Y, X, and then you switch the two. <laughs> so this is kind of a nice feature. So uh, in fact, we can do a demo. Uh, do, I, do I have a demo somewhere? Yes, so so x is two, y is three. If we switch, and then uh, maybe for for clarity, let's change that to minus two. See there, so we we just switch uh, by doing that. It's a very nice feature, uh, and then Python has its own uh, ID ID, uh, although I'm not using it. Uh, I've been using the. I, I'm actually wonder how many people are still using the Python native ID. So most people use something else nowadays. Uh, but Python come with its own IDE. Uh, in the old days, uh, when there's no other choice, I have to use those uh, myself. So, uh, <clears throat> okay, so let's go to the second part. Uh, it's basically the branching program. Uh, in Python, this is actually an important part. It, uh, so in Python, oh, let me turn that thing off. Uh, what this means is the branching part means indentation matters in Python. If you, if you uh, recall in Java, if you do a if else loop or for loop, indentation doesn't make you, it's really those parentheses uh, uh, clearly matters. But in Python, it's the indentation matters. So, so Python in a way is a very strict uh, formatting language. Uh, in a way, compared to many other languages. So here, but uh, is that a book example? I'm not sure. Uh, let's see. So Python, if say there's something to, and then the block of code has to be indented, uh, that's that's where the branching part is. The else uh, go back to the same uh, starting place, then that means it's a different branch. And then everything executed in that else block has to be indented uh, to the right. Yeah, so Python has a very strict this kind of a format. And the example the book gave you is uh, if, let's say there is a variable x, if it's, what is pound sign by uh, a percentage by two again? Uh, we, are, we are taking the mode of the two. So if, if 
something moved by two is a zero, it's an even number, uh, else it's an odd number. So basically that's a code trying to tell whether the integer is even or not. <coughs> uh, if it's true, we print an even. If, it's, uh, if the mode by two is zero, it's, uh, we print an even, otherwise we print an odd. At uh, the end of it, we say we are done with this. But notice this print doesn't have indentation, so it's outside of else loop. And so whenever you do that last line should always be printed. Um, we can actually see, uh, oh, I don't have the full implementation of that. Uh, I have a different implementation of the nested one. Uh, maybe I, let me just type it right now. Uh, so what we are going to do is if uh, in zero, and then see it actually automatically indented for me. So then I say print even. Then it's still indented for me, but I don't not need one, so I delete that indent, and then I print the else, print odd. And the next one, I'm going to say print all down. Uh, let's say that. And uh, what x should we pick? x equal two. Let's start with that. All right. So it's even all down. But if I change x equal three, that last line should also be printed. Right. But if I indented the last line, then it will only be printed when what? the odd number are there. So if I change that to uh, four, whoops, four, the last line won't be printed since, because now I indented it. So if I print there, that line is gone. So it's the indentation in Python really matters. Uh, I will know and then if you forgot about it, that's where the uh, came from. <laughs> so, uh, Okay, so indentation matters in Python anyway. So. And then, oh, here, uh, that's the nested uh, <coughs> branching pattern. Uh, so in this case, we, uh, we have a, uh, first we'll see whether it's di uh, divisible by two, and then we see three. So, but inside, uh, if the two is false, then we test whether it's the, uh, else if three, uh, it's kind of become, let me see. Uh, oh, I see. If it's not divided by two, it must be an odd number. If it's an odd number, then we see whether it's the uh, uh, exact uh, uh, number of three or not. So it could be nine, right? So, uh, if it's the inside of two, that's an even number, but even number can be divided by three, it could be something like six. Um, it's basically trying to, to do this kind of a test. So uh, usually it's much easier to write that on a piece of paper using a graph. So let's see the example here. So I use the example of uh, six. And six should be what? Uh, it's true mode by two, and then it's also true mode by three. So you sh should print this one, div divisible by two and three. There. But if I change that to what number you want to choose? Uh, <coughs> uh, 27? What's the result would be? Uh, well, uh, just for the exercise, I'm going to let you pick on Socrative. So on Socrative, you can actually write your answer there. So what answer do you think this will uh, print out? So. What's the, if I change that to 27, what's the result would be? Oh, I should hide the answer, <laughs> but you already see it, that's fine. 
by three and not two. And basically the last one. Okay, it looks like a, let's see. Yeah, so it should be the last uh, branch printed out. Okay, let's see how are we doing on the time. It's still good. So. And then there are also a, a compound uh, statement. Uh, bo compound boolean uh, expressions. So and uh, that's conditional for both are true. Um, I don't have an example of that, but we can we can type it in there if we like. But let's skip that. Uh, uh, the book actually explained, although we can put if else there, this is still considered constant time uh, implementation. So, uh, <clears throat> okay, so, <coughs> that's a finger exercise. Uh, maybe we should do it, uh, let me see which finger exercise on there. Oh, I see. Uh, maybe I should mention this. Uh, I'll I'll go back to this later. So. Uh, Let me pick the right exercise. Oh, uh, that's for the boolean type. So that's also too easy for you. That's the string one now. That's the that's a string exercise. So. Uh, well, maybe I should just use my own example for this. So. Okay, let's do a, uh, what exercise should we do? Instead of, a, uh, let's see. Maybe let's just use the book example. Write program to exam three variable x, y, z and print out the largest odd number among them. It's none of them are all uh, print a message that uh, to that effect, just say none of them are odd. So, okay, so how do we do that? Uh, it's much easier if I start with a logical plan. So I'm going to start with uh, plan. So let's see, uh, can I, I'm going to stop sharing this screen. So we have a, a X, uh, Y, Z. 
uh, print out the largest uh, odd number among them. Uh, well, this is actually going to write uh, quite a quite a bit uh, if else. So how do we do? So let's first take the combination. So let's first do x uh, is x less than y or not. Uh, if it's true, uh, if it's true, I go to the this side. If it's false, I go to another side. Uh, if 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 x is less than y, then I pick is y less than z or not. Sorry. This is much, uh, that means y, if this is true, this means y greater than x. If it's false, that means x is greater than y. So I'm going to ignore the boundary condition. Uh, uh, and if that's the case, I'm going to say whether x is greater than, uh, is compare x with a z. Uh, so I'm going to let the true always go to the left and false go to the right. So. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. If if this is true, that means uh, that means z is greater than x, and x is greater than y. So z is the largest number. The z is the maximal number. Right. So. That's why well, I found the large number is z, and then I need to see whether z is the odd, is the odd number or not. So, and then I do z uh, mode by <coughs> two. Where well, if it's zero, it's I found the largest odd number. Okay, so that's one one branch. I'm done with one branch. If if it's uh, false, that means x is greater than z. And then uh, x is the maximum number, right? So then I see whether x is the odd number or not. So I need to do x mod two to see whether x is odd number or not. Okay, and then I go to the left branch. If if this one is true, or if it is false. If it's true, that means the z greater than uh, y. Z greater than y. And y greater than x. So z is still the largest number. Okay, I hope the last branch picked y. So, so if it's a false, so that means y greater than z. Uh, and y also greater than x, so that's correct. So if it's false, then y is the maximum number. Uh, and then I, at the last step, I apply the mode two again. So there, yeah, that's my logical flow. Uh, quite the uh, look like my daughter wrote. <laughs> I know. Uh, we basically have to implement that in Python. Uh, what, how many time do I have? Uh, maybe I can, uh, okay, let's try implement that in Python. That would be quite something if I write this on the fly and it works at first time. Uh, so let's implement that. Uh, where did my IPython go? Okay, here's my IPython go. So, <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to uh, uh, add a new block. Uh, that's code block. Uh, 
let's say, I'm going to have a three variable x, y, z. Let's pick it one, two, and three. Okay. And then I'm going to say if x less than y or not. Uh, yes. Uh, if it's true, and then if it's true, then I say if y less than z or not. Okay. So I'm going to leave the, the major branch there. If else, what should I do? Uh, then I should do is x less than z or not. Oh. Yeah. This automatically zooming is, is a bad feature. <laughs> I don't want to take the automatic zoom. Uh, if it's else, I say if, uh, what's that? If x less than z or not. Uh, Okay, so those are the uh, main logic I have, so the two main logical operations. Then I have to take care of all those branches. Uh, I can also uh, combine that, right? So I can say uh, this means the uh, y greater than x, else means uh, uh, x greater x greater than y. <coughs> and this, I'm going to set the else there. If it's true, that means y, uh, which step am I at? The true step, I think z greater than y greater than x. So the y is a, uh, z is a large number. Then I do uh, if z uh, mode 2 equals 0 or not. Uh, if it's true, I print, uh, say, the largest other number is Z. Uh, if it's not, I print a last. Is not odd. Right. So, uh, will this work or not? I, I haven't finished the whole thing, but I'm going to see whether the Z going to this branch going to print out because Z is the largest one. So, it, it seems to me this branch should uh, follow through. So, I'm going to, but I'm not sure whether the price I'm going to say I need to add something else or not. So, no, I have to put finish rest. <laughs> okay, uh, let me. I add some other things there, so. But you can actually see that's what the IPython does. So I, I can test my code at any time while I'm writing it, so. Uh, let's see. If it's else, that means, uh, that means the Z, so Y greater than Z, and Y greater than X. And then I test if x mode two uh, equals zero. I basically can, so that part of the code, if I, if I define a function, maybe it's more appropriate. So I'll just say, No, that's why I say. 
the largest uh, odd number is y. Oh, I made a logical mistake. Uh, that should be not zero. Sorry. <laughs> if it's not zero, it's the largest odd number. If it's otherwise, it's the I, it's good I correct that mistake myself. So. Okay, so it looks like uh, I finished my one branch. Um, so I'm going to just add something uh, <coughs> temporary, see if I get the wrong or not. Yeah, it does work. So. Yeah, so at least for the when z is the largest uh, on number, it works. Right. Even though I haven't finished the other branch, so uh, if I change that to four, it should print the largest number is not odd. So excellent. So, but I just basically put my uh, chicken join graph into the Python code. So. All right. So let's finish the rest of the branches. So basically uh, replaces to do with something else, right? So if that is true, that means the z greater than x and x greater than y. So then I just again testing the z again. Uh, oops, sorry. So I can, it's actually not a very good practice to copy paste, uh, but I want to save some typing here. The most of the programming bug, at least I have come from copy pasting something even I wrote myself. <laughs> so, uh, but let's see. So if this is not, okay, so we are done with this loop. That means I'm done with this one. And the last branch is here. Else, uh, I'm going to, if it's else, and then it's what? Uh, x greater than z. And we also know x greater than y. So x will be the largest number. I print then test for x. Um, and send that to x. Okay, let's see. So how do we test this? I mean, we, we have the, we have this code. Uh, if I do nothing here, it's still going to test the Z branch. So I need to somehow make the, the, the program run into different branches, different flow, right? So, and then I basically look at the condition here. So I need to have a code where X greater than Y this is uh, x is the largest number, or y is the largest number, right? So I have to, right now I'm only testing z is the largest number. Oh, sorry, question. Oh, sorry. Question. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. okay. So I need to change my code to say say x is the largest number, and then uh, z becomes the small. In fact, you should do all the combinations, but right now I'm going to pick X as the largest number. So what, if X is the largest number, it, this will be false. That will be false. You should print the X is largest number, right? So you should print that, uh, right? The largest number of X is not odd, in fact, because X is four, right? so. Excellent, so it's actually indeed printed out that way. If I change the uh, x equal six, uh, it, <coughs> no, that's the, if I change national five, it should print out the largest number is five, right? instead of uh, not, is five is odd, so. Yeah, so good, so I testing for largest number is x, and then I should testing for largest number is uh, y, I, I'm going to pick y five, so. <clears throat> okay, if y is phi, a largest number, so this is going to be true, and <coughs> that's going to be false, it's going to go this way, and then pick, print out y. Uh, 
uh, it's going to print out large, should print out this line, largest on number is y, which is five. Okay. Excellent, it, indeed. Uh, just to make sure I'm going to change that to 50, so it's 27. Uh, okay, it is 27. If I change that to 20A, it should print out to say, it's not odd, right? So, yeah, very good. So it, I tested for, actually I have not testing a different Z branch. That Z branch basically means the X is greater than Y. So I tested the Z is the largest number, but I never test the X is greater than Y. So I also need to do that testing. So I'm gonna change the Z into uh, 55, let's say. And then X is 13 and Y equals, I don't know, two. I need to test in the last branch, which I had never worked through. All. So that's basically is this one because there are two different Z output. Okay. <clears throat> uh, it should print out the, this, this part, the largest number is, uh, what's that, 55. So, yeah, very, very good. I'm actually quite impressed by myself uh, so far. So let's see the last one. <laughs> so, uh, 56, so I tested all branches working. Now what I haven't tested is the boundary condition. What if it's a one, 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 or three, three, three? I never implement that. But because the, the code I wrote, I never considered they are equal. So basically I should testing, if that's the case, I'm going to say if X equal Y, uh, or, x equal z or uh, z equal y, I'm going to just say, oops, I'm going to just say print bye bye. <laughs> I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> right, that basically, if, if you are, of course, in, in reality, you may want to reconsider that situation <laughs> so anyhow so that in, in my case there's no boundary condition so <laughs> yeah. uh, if I but then I ha also uh, and then what I actually need to do I need to, to put a, this entire thing into the else part uh, I need to put the entire thing actually uh, can I move the whole thing by a block? Uh, excellent, I can move the whole thing by a block. So if that's the case, I'm going to, basically if it's, if they are not equal, I'm going to do the test. If, if they are equal, I, I don't do anything, right? So if, if, let's say whether this works or not. I'm actually quite surprised. So two. Oh. Uh, I have, oh, I see. I shouldn't do it though. No. There's another indentation problem. Uh, apparently, I see. Uh, this whole block is not indented. Uh, okay, so. Actually, somehow this related to GitHub I want to show. If you want to make sure the program always working, you need to keep the version of the code. But I have not reached that point. Okay, so it does bring that by. <laughs> Once I keep the correct indentation. So, okay, so, uh, yeah, I'm actually is recording this myself, so. And uh, how much time is this? So. I still have some time, so. Uh, <clears throat> where is my, uh, oh, apparently I, I closed my own uh, window. Um, no, I did not, I just minimized. So Python also has a string and uh, input. So string is something, uh, uh, have a lot of uh, <coughs> building function in uh, Python. It's also much more convenient to use than Java. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, Python 
is so popular partly because of the, the stream and other text uh, parsing related function. It's very efficient for data analysis. And many of the data you come in are in string format. So that's one of the reasons, uh, at least, why Python become the most popular language in our life is because of this. And, well, I, at least part of it, partially because of this. So, <clears throat> so Python string, uh, you can use a quote. Uh, you can also do this three times that. Actually, that will just duplicate it. Yeah. Actually, not duplicate it, uh, triple it. <laughs> yeah. So it, we can actually testing this uh, using the IPython directory. So. Uh, it, oh, it doesn't look like I put those before class. Okay, let's just type it in. So. Okay, so that's a string A, and then if I say three times, three times A, what do you think it should output? It actually output three A. So if I say three A, now this is a tricky part. If I say three A B, how do you think it uh, going to do this? It's basically treat those as a unit. Uh, okay. So that actually makes it uh, a bit fun if you do that. Um, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, <clears throat> now, if I say three plus four, that should equal seven. But oh, I should start with a different one. Uh, if, if I if I say uh, three uh, plus four is is seven, but what if I say Say a a plus b. That's actually basically uh, do an overload, uh, like Java overload. It, that plus basically means string concatenation here. So, if I, in fact, I already use it quite often. Like many other printing function here, it, it's basically concatenation there. So, like I print error equal error. It basically put this string with those numbers, right? So, uh, <clears throat> so that's a string operator. Yeah, so that, actually the book also quite explained that, that plus sign of string is something called the overloaded operator. Uh, so two plus two is interpreted uh, as arithmetic uh, addition, but, uh, String plus string become a concatenation. So, but if you type string multiply by string, that should give you an error because then I guess it's not interpretable. <laughs> yeah. So we can actually try to do that ourselves. See whether it works. That is, uh, if I say multiply by b, that should give you an error. Say. That's not overloaded for string, so. <clears throat> and to check, uh, we can also use some uh, building function like a length of the string. So length ABC should be three, and we can also, we can also index the string. Uh, that's actually, let's do that. If I say A, B, C is one, what numbers do you think it will put out? What result do you think it will put out? Excellent, yeah. So, so Python is with many language, the first position is zero. So one is actually the second position in the index. So. Yeah, why that's the case? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> that seems to be a convention in most programming languages. So. so if I say length A, A, B, C, D, that should output four. That's basically the length of it. So we can also do something called slicing. Uh, if a string, we can take a subset of it. So. 
So from now this also needs to, so apparently if like this, one, two, three is actually pick one and two. The last one is not uh, inclusive. Uh, Unfortunately, those basically that's the idiosyncratic part of Python. You just have to remember. I don't remember all this, but every time I write a code, I test it and just make sure I'm not making some dumb mistake. <laughs> I I often program in, in many different languages, so I try to not even bother remember what language uh, specific effect is because uh, I just make a lot of confusion. <laughs> Instead, every time I do something, I Double check if that's the case. Uh, there may be many other important things you should remember, but those are technical parts. That said, you may need to remember this to take the exam for this class. <laughs> but in practice, there will be so many details in many things. You like if you work in a company, there probably stack stack of menus you need to check. I don't think you want to remember all those things. <laughs> you just need to check them when you need them. Yeah. So, in, the, uh, in this case, uh, let's say if I, uh, uh, I want to say uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, if I want to say uh, four, two, five, I don't, <laughs> does that count? let's say uh, four, seven. How many letters do you think you should output? Uh, actually, is that zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, five, I, G, H, I, J, I should add more, sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, E, F, G, four, five, six. It actually output four, five, six. So let me see, zero, one, two, three, four. Four, number four position is E, so. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. That's, uh, if you look at the the book, the version I gave you, you still use the Python 2.7 input, but the Python 3. Point, uh, Python 3 use a different input and uh, already. Where is that input? Uh, I sort of have an example of input. Uh, okay. Oh, I see. Here's the input. Yeah, input your name. Uh, okay. Uh, so I put the first online assignment there. I, I'm also going to up, save this code and then update it on uh, the UTC Learn. Uh, let me see. Maybe I should go over your homework assignment. So the, the homework assignment is basically uh, If you, I think if you go to my grade, you probably can see the pending, yeah, see, uh, upcoming, oh, I should remove those. Uh, YouTube self-introduction, that should be, uh, it's due uh, in one week. Um, so you basically let you know how to screen test and you need to uh, talk a little bit, that's it. So. And uh, uh, please install Anaconda or uh, also GitHub. I register for GitHub. And so I'll try today, Thursday, I'll try to cover up the basic Python and then uh, go over a little bit of GitHub uh, next class. Okay, uh, questions? Uh, if you have. Okay, well, all good. So then, yeah.